Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sharing with you some of our family's favorite read alouds. You are looking just for some great literature and book suggestions for your children as they are getting older, then stay tuned. This video is part of a monthly collaboration with Abby from Rooted and Resk and Jessica at the Waldock Way. They host a monthly collaboration with homeschool moms every single month sharing different parts of our lives. So I'm so excited, so excited about this month's collaboration. It is about being a librarian, which we all are in our own right as we are building our home libraries slowly but surely enjoying rich literature with our kids and so that is what this video is all about and so i'm just really excited to share some of our favorites that we have experienced as a family over the past few years and more importantly i would like to know share with me in the comments if one of these books is also one of your family favorites or if i missed one and that you have really enjoyed reading with your kids then please share that down below always looking to expand our home library. So when it comes to just building a library at home, I do think that books slowly accumulate over time. And so we have, you know, a couple different bookshelves and I feel like I'm always adding to that. And one way to just do it affordably is definitely thrift, just thrifting in general. So whenever I'm going to a thrift store, I always check their books because you never know what you're going to find. And I also purchase a lot of our books on thrift books as well. And you can, you know, have friends. So I've had friends that, you know, we've picked up extra copies of different things. You know, if I'm at the thrift store and I know, oh, I have that book already, but I know it's like classic literature that every family should have, pick it up. A lot of times they're like 50 cents or a dollar and then you can just share with one another. And so I've been also given books from friends that kind of hit that list. I don't want to spend too much longer on my intro. Let's get into some of our family favorites favorites and maybe you'll see one that you love as well. The first thing I want to say is if you are new to try to, you know, picking out good books and maybe you're kind of just in that stage where you're looking for good literature, I always highly recommend Honey for a Child's Heart. This is a book that I um, refer to a lot. This is a book that my mom used when I was a kid and this just gives you suggestions based on your child's age of age um, appropriate books and different genres. This is an incredible resource for any mom that has children of any age, just to give you kind of a good source that is in a book form of what to pick and when to pick it for your kids. So I refer to this a lot. This is how I have created and found a lot of the books that I want to purchase and invest in for our home library. And also, I really love the Ambleside book list, which you can find, I will link their website down below, that will also give you a lot of great suggestions based on your child's age, knowing they are rich, good, time-proven literature. So the first series may come at no surprise to some of you, but it is the Lion, the Words in the Wardrobe series by C.S. Lewis. I just grabbed two of the books. I actually picked these up for a dollar a piece at our thrift store the whole series and collection. I always recommend starting with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Perhaps you've seen the movie, perhaps you've heard of the story. These are, they're just such delightful children's stories. We don't worry about trying to compare them to, you know, the Bible or anything like that, but just leave them as a story as they are. They stand alone by themselves as delightful children's books, which I believe that C.S. Lewis <laughs> intended for them. And so, um, my oldest daughter is actually listening to these on audiobook on Audible. Those are really well done. And we have read these. I'm actually reading Magician's Nephew for like the 10th time for a book club this month. And anyways, I could, if you have never read the Narnia series, start with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. You can actually do Magician's Nephew last and give these a try with your kids. So oh, another book, Penguin Classic here, is The Secret Garden. We read The Secret Garden, I think, two years ago. This one is such a sweet story. And, I, you know, I really enjoy diving in books with my kids that bring out delightful character development and children, children specifically, like stories about children that are learning these big, you know, lifelong lessons. And... The Secret Garden, I can't remember the girl's name right now just because we read it so long ago. Mary, I think it's Mary. Um, 
everything that she just goes through and she, you know, develops and then the little boy. And anyway, The Secret Garden is definitely one of my favorite books. My girls loved it. And we also have The Little Princess and that is on our list to read. I'm sure that one is just as delightful, but The Secret Garden would definitely be on my top list. Little Women. So my girls and I also read this one a couple years ago and I reread it last year for a book club that I'm in. This is such a great story. And even though the girls are, you know, a little bit older and no girl boys, girls and boys can both read these books. Your The gender of your child does not dictate the stories that they can enjoy. They can enjoy stories about little girls. They can enjoy stories about little boys. The characters and, you know, heroes and all of that doesn't matter about that. And so of course, little boys can read about little women. My girls love actually little men, which is, you know, I think that the third book in this series, maybe it's the second, I can't remember. But anyway, Little Women is definitely one that I would re re recommend. And I love Louisa May Alcott just in general as a good author to choose books from. I cannot do a favorite family read aloud and not mention the Burgess Bird books. So, or the Burgess books, I should say in general. So we read the Burgess Bird book. Actually, Simply Charlotte Mason has like a bird study unit kind of study, but it's like a nature study is more what Charlotte Mason would consider it, where you're just like studying the birds. And it is delightful. You purchase the Dover coloring books. We did this three or four years ago when I first started hearing about Charlotte Mason and we read the Burgess Bird book. And so now as part of Ambleside, we are reading the Burgess Animal book and it is so cute. And then these ones, my oldest, I've had her read. They have so many. And so a lot of times I'll just, you know, watch for these at the thrift, the thrift store or get them on thrift books. But you have all the individual characters that so often show up in Burgess's animal stories, like Reddy the Fox, Blackie the Crow, uh, the Red Squirrel, Chatterer the Red Squirrel. And I just grabbed a couple of these to show you. We have quite the collection of Burgess books, but these are truly delightful. And we had read this, the bird one. And then when we started reading the Burgess animal book, you know, so many of the characters of, you know, the, the meadows and the green forest all just kind of come together. And so I would definitely introduce the Burgess books to your family and just, you know, you can even start with one of the shorter stories, but these characters will just come again and again, and again, kind of like a Beatrix Potter. Um, but these are, I would say a little more difficult to maybe read and so that's why they worked really well as a read aloud just so mom can read them but anyway we love the burgess books they are truly delightful and i would definitely add those to your family library the next author i would recommend for you to collect for your family library would be george mcdonald i had never read george mcdonald until i became a mom in fact i was first introduced to the princess and the goblin my sister-in-law told me to pick this one up I think two or three years ago. So two years ago, we added this and we read it in our morning time. And my girls loved this book. And so then at the end of it, it said something like there was like another story like, and I was like, wait, there's a sequel to this. Yeah, it was like the last chapter. And it said, the rest of the history of the princess and Curdy must be kept for another volume. So this is Princess and Curdy. And I was like, what? There's a second story. There's a sequel. And so sure enough, the princess and Curdy, which was also just as entertaining and we loved it just as much. So then because we were just absolutely delighted by George MacDonald and this series last time, I don't know, not last time, but at some point in the last few months, I picked up another one. Um, I think this was at the thrift store. I don't remember. Oh no, it was thrift books. And this was called the light princess by George MacDonald. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing his name, right? George MacDonald. And oh my gosh, we actually laughed out loud. This is a very short story. In fact, this could be a reader for like ages eight to 10. They could read this by themselves. It's, it was an easy book to read. I didn't have to read this one out loud, but it was really funny. And I don't want to tell you why, because I didn't, the name of the title, The Light Princess is kind of a tongue in cheek. And so anyway, that was a really funny book. Um, my kids cracked up and even my, 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 recently 
turned five-year-old son actually really enjoyed that book as well. So the next one I would have in my family library is The Tales from Shakespeare. This is Charles and Mary Lamb. Now, as a, as a mother who never read Shakespeare, didn't know anything about Shakespeare, um, this is a really good introduction. And this is what's recommended by like a lot of Charlotte Mason style curriculums. They tell you to start with the, like his stories and the adapted versions of it. And so that's what the tales of Shakespeare are. They're like his plays, but in just a short story. So you can read these over a couple weeks. And this is what we did for like the first two years. And it familiarized us enough with the play so that this year when, or actually last spring, when we started, my girls are eight and 10 and a half. And when we started actually reading the play, it was really helpful to have like that background. But these give you just kind of the delight of Shakespeare without having to bother with the script. And they're also, this is written for children as well. And so it's done appropriately for those ages. So I would recommend everyone get Tales from Shakespeare in their family library. This will be an asset um, also for your school. I had to share Understood Betsy. This was on our reading list for year two in Ambleside with my eight-year-old daughter. My 10-year-old also likes to enjoy all the books that we are reading. And that's why even when they're not family read-alouds, like the ones that we've chosen specifically for our morning time, often they get read by everybody. Anyways, this book was adorable. Understood Betsy. And I had friends that said they read it when they were kids. I didn't. And so I got to enjoy all the cuteness of Betsy and her just growing up and changing when she has to go live with some other relatives that are that live on a farm and she's kind of like grew up in the city and so she has to you know learn like milk churning and all the simple things of life and just how that really grows her as a person and so this will definitely be one that I think my girls will recall when they're older as just a really sweet and precious book that made them smile. Okay, so I can't do a family library video without having Little Pilgrim's Progress on my recommendation list. When we um, tried Pilgrim's Progress, like the original Pilgrim's Progress a couple years ago, I could barely like read it. It is written in like such old English where it's like the horse before the cart. And I had a really, really hard time. And then I remembered my mom had read this one when I was a kid that had little Christian and it was just, it was different. And so this is it, <laughs> the little pilgrim's progress. So we read this a couple years ago and we'll read it again when my five-year-old, maybe, maybe we'll read it again next year. This is one you could read over and over again. That's why library, hence what you need to, you know, have in your home library. Little Pilgrim's Progress is just a delight. And, you know, having them narrate it back to you, that's why I would include this in maybe your morning time, um, will help them recall the principles that little Christian is really learning. But because it's in a story format, you don't have to like grill it. They will pick up on everything he's learning all by themselves. They'll they'll do it all by themselves independently. And so that is an adorable book. I would highly recommend that to add to your home library. So then we have one of my personal favorites from being a kid. This is Brian Jacques, Red Wall. There is probably like 30 books in the Red Wall series. I have been slowly watching for them at thrift stores. Like this one I got for 75 cents at a thrift store nearby us. And so Brian Jacques, I also have also his, um, I can't think of the name of it right now. It's like the Angels in Command. It's another series of his. His books are so great. They're very alive. I read probably all 30 of them out loud. I come from a family of seven, and so I have three younger brothers, and I read a lot of books out loud to them, which probably saved my mother's voice <laughs> quite a bit, but the Red Wall series uh, brings a lot of joy and memories back to them, and the characters and the creatures in them, and they all kind of build on top of each other. So I have not started reading these to my kids yet. They are on my list for this year to introduce them to the Red Wall characters, and just kind of get that started in their life. So it's kind of like the Burgess books where you get to know the characters and just, you know, create relationships with them. And I think Redwall series is a lot like that. So 
I would put these on your list to kind of keep an eye out for and start to build those into your library. They can be read as a family, but they also can be read like ages, I would say like 10 and up probably would be, it's, it's a little, a little more difficult reading uh, independently, but I would say like 10 and up would be good. So this is actually our current read aloud. And I also want to put a shameless plug in there for the Osborne illustrated classics we have a few of these so they have some really just delightful pictures in them let's see if you can see that so this is around the world in 80 days and you can see where we're at in the book uh we just started this one last week what i like about this is it has kind of short chapters so we can do it in the 10 minutes a day but we're actually doing a book club with my mother and our cousins um with this book and uh we have watched the movie but of course the book is always better. And so we're really enjoying this one, Phileas Fogg and Passport 2. Uh, so if you've read this one, let me know down below, but I wanted to share that as one that we are currently reading. I have a few more to share with you guys. Again, this could not be all inclusive. Uh, uh, our library, we consisted, I'll have to show you a video, but we have, a couple different bookshelves of varying books and I will say that I'm continuously adding to it. That's why I would love your recommendations down below. So Charlotte's Web made the cut for this video. I love this book and it's a classic. I read it when I was a kid. It's definitely one that you should be keeping an eye out for at the thrift store or just purchase and add it to your collection. But this is an adorable book. You've probably seen the movie. If you've not read, if you've not read the book, you've probably seen the movie but I would add the book to your must have family read alouds, that collection. I am actually going to add in two, two uh, picture books that I think should be in your family library. These are good for all ages. They're also good for like my 10 year old reading to my five year old or my two year old and kind of getting that as well. But these are truly classic timeless books there's a lot of good books out there. There's a lot of good picture books out there that I, I could do a whole video on picture books. Uh, I'm sure you can relate. But these two, The Little Red Hen makes the cut and The Ugly Duckling. Um, so if you do not have these yet, keep an eye out for them or grab them down below. I'll see if I can find the links for these specific um copies because i think the illustrations are really just well done and super cute so little red hen ugly duckling get those in your library those are two stories that i think every child can kind of relate to the little red hen the lesson she learns um or i should say the lesson her friends learn and then the ugly duckling and just how that story also comes about i think are two really cute ones and then the last book that i want to share is actually part of a series that my mom read to us when we were kids and now i am reintroducing them to my kids thanks to ambleside online i'm so grateful for ambleside i'm so grateful for the charlotte mason education and just literature based education and really focusing on reading good books spending time together in literature and stories and fairy tales and everything in that that realm it has just brought me so much delight these last couple years and so we are rereading these books together my 10 and 8 year old and we're reading these are part of their independent work so we're not doing these as a family but these are books that i think every family should have in their home library absolutely so my mom actually gave me the copies that she had and i think she, we were just missing one and so i had to pick up that but it is the holly and clancy books you have tree in the trail paddle to the sea uh seabird and men of the mississippi um these i could not find as i mean affordably so i'll link what i can check thrift books, check your thrift store, keep an eye out for these. Sometimes the really classic good picture books are harder to find. And sometimes you just have to invest in them for your family, for your legacy, for your home library. And when they're classic, it's definitely worth it. So this series, this is the Holly Clancy. I would definitely recommend investing in these books as well. One more time, just to remind you, Honey for a Child's Heart, this book is incredible. It lists all of the books that I mentioned today, plus a whole bunch more. 
Be sure to check the playlist down below just to see what other moms are doing and what their libraries look like. I'm sure it will be very interesting and I'm looking forward to watching those videos as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, then I would love to see you here again soon. So subscribe down below. That is all I have for today. I'll see you next time. Bye.